Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Patrick Foley, or better known as Patrick4D on social media. I'm a 3D artist based in Atlanta, Georgia, specializing primarily in the ad field, making a lot of hyper-realistic product renders, um, and sometimes a lot of abstract stuff as well. But what we're gonna be going through in this video is showing you how to texture and render out the finalized hot chocolate image that we started from before. Um, and I think it's pretty cool, and the cool part is we're not even using Dynamics, so we can technically go back and manipulate the splash currently as it is. So uh, I think we're good to go, and uh, yeah, we're using Cinema 4D and Octane, so uh, we can now start texturing this thing. And uh, I think what's cool is uh, this thing is pretty much already done, we just have to uh, texture it, yeah. So what we can start working on is the mug first, the most boring part, because it's pretty much just like this clay white mug. Of course, you can make it whatever color you want, but we'll start with white. So let's go to object or materials and go to Octane Glossy Material, and that's pretty much it. So we can go mug, let's just title that, make it easier, and let's drag this on the mug. And we can see we're getting some nice reflections here, got that nice highlight, um, and that's pretty much it for the mug, so congratulations. Um, the next thing we want to do is... Uh, texture the uh, coffee or hot chocolate or whatever you want to call this stuff. So I think we're good here. Of course, I'm using two 2080 Ti's. Um, and, uh, you know, these are using the RTX feature here. Um, the RTX 2080 Ti's I'm using in unison here. And uh, just a quick tip here, if you go to the Octane settings, you go to settings, devices, you can see them both here working. Um, and device settings, with the newest version of Octane, you can actually enable the RTX acceleration feature, which uh, definitely helps a little bit. Uh, and it definitely, and you can see that it's on right here. And you can see, even though we haven't textured this thing, it is a pretty, you know, there's a, a lot of segments going on here, a lot of light bouncing off. And if I render this, it definitely is rendering very faster, or very fast. So I think we're good here. We can work on the... Uh, coffee or hot chocolate. I still don't know. I guess this is uh, hot chocolate because you wouldn't pair all this stuff with coffee. Um, but uh, yeah, let's start with it. So if you look at this stuff that I made earlier, it definitely looks like this hot chocolate looking texture. Of course, we got some bubbles, um, but in the kind of lower, in the thinner looking parts, you can see the subsurface scattering looking thing where it does get more translucent in the middle. So that is what we are going for. So what we're going to do is go to materials, Let's go Octane Specular Material and drag it on the uh, liquid. And right now it is uh, looking very sad because uh, there's just so much wrong with this um, that we have to adjust first. So let's go to the Octane Specular. Um, let's for one call this Hot Cocoa. Oops. Hot Cocoa. Boom. Looks good to me. Uh, we're going to go to Common, Fake Shadows, click that, looks good. And we're going to go to uh, Node Editor, now we can get rid of this guy. Um, and this is where this starts to get important, and I want to be able to see this thing as clearly as I can. Um, so we're going to take this Hot Cocoa node and drag it over here, and we're going to want to make a... This is all about subsurface scattering, so we're going to take a Medium Scattering node, drag this all the way out. Remember, we need to preserve real estate here. Um, and so we're going to take a, an RGB spectrum and drag that to the absorption. For now, we can make this 100% white. And uh, that should be good for now. Um, and we're going to take a float, go to scattering. As you can see, that is definitely creating some subsurface scattering look. Um, but what we want to make sure now that we have is a nice color for this. So let's Go to HSV here, drag this out, and just start adding a little bit of color here. Something like hot chocolate. And again, I'm making this from scratch, because I think it is helpful to see kind of me building this from scratch, um, in and out, um, to see what's going on here. So I'm going to take this guy and drag this down to the point where it almost looks there. Something like that. Uh, and now we're looking like fruit juice or something here. That's not what we want. So let's uh, let's drag this guy down a little bit. And you can see we're already starting to get that kind of almost chocolatey looking texture. Um, with the edges being a little bit more translucent. 
And that's what we want. So I think it just comes down to dialing the correct. Yeah, it's starting to look more like syrupy, chocolatey looking. And that's looking like dark chocolate. Um, but it really just comes down to messing uh, and seeing where your eye finds it most appealing. We don't want it too red, um, but we don't want it too yellow as well. It starts to look a little bit gross. Um, something like this actually starts to look uh, pretty decent to me. Um, or even something like that. Um, so I think we actually have a pretty good uh, mixture here. Um, but I think this looks good for our hot chocolate so far. Of course, we need our bubbles, which would be nice to have. Um, so I think we can start working on that now since we're working on the uh, this whole hot chocolatey looking thing. Um, so for the bubbles, of course, make a small sphere. And notice how many bubbles we have here. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it is a lot. And um, if you notice the properties of the bubbles, they're all kind of opaque in the center or uh, translucent in the center. My apologies. Um, and that's exactly kind of this illusion that we're going to be going for. So we want a pretty low poly circle that looks pretty dang small. Um, even smaller than that, probably. Um, but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make a texture. Let's go material, octane glossy material. Important. Because we don't need all this uh, refraction, all this stuff, just for tiny bubbles. So we're going to drag that on there, glossy. <clears throat> and then we're going to go to uh, Node Editor. And um, remember, we're just texturing this guy here. So if you want to zoom in, you can. Um, and what we're going to want to do is grab, we're going to go to Fall Off. Take a Fall Off node here and drag that onto the opacity. And you can see what's happening here. Just dragging that fall off onto the opacity is creating a nice, almost bubbly looking effect, even though it's not real refraction or anything. And we're gonna take the diffuse to something a little bit more brown. Something that looks nice. Boom. Um, and that should be good. We'll, we, might be have, we might have to adjust that in a little bit. Um, and then it'll just be adjusting the, the amount of fall off. So I think we can actually adjust that just a tad. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, to me that looks pretty good. Um, and we'll see what comes of all of this. Um, so we're going to take this sphere and just go to uh, Objects, Octane Scatter. That's key because uh, you're able to add so many more things in an Octane Scatter with this thing running fast than you are with a cloner. So we're gonna drag the sphere inside the Octane Scatter. Octane Scatter, go to Distribution Surface. And by default, we have a thousand bubbles, so let's drag the liquid. And now we can see what's going on here. So we have tons of bubbles that look way too big, but you can see because there is uh, some glossiness here, they do look like bubbles, but they're nowhere near as uh, complicated and uh, problematic as regular, um, what do you call it, uh, specular materials. So, uh, so what we have here is let's go to the sphere and knock this down from four to maybe two. And now you can see them still, but there's much less of them. So let's take the octane scatter and make it like 10,000. And we can see, even though we're not where we need to be yet, we can see what's going on here, which is nice. Um, and that looks good. So uh, let's take, honestly, let's take this down to 1.5. And remember, we're very zoomed in, so we're going to be even more zoomed out than we are now. Um, and let's take the, uh, before we do anything else, let's go MoGraph Effector Random. And then we're going to drag the random into the effector of the uh, Octane Scatter. And right now it's scattering everything, which we don't want, so we need to parameter position. Uh, let's get rid of the position here. And let's go scale, uniform scale, let's go 0.4. Something like that. So we are getting a randomized uh, thing here. We don't have to worry about the rotation or anything because these are perfect spheres. Um, and I think what we can do actually is let's make the 
the color of these a little bit, a little bit brighter. A little bit less brown, maybe. Um, maybe a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. Um, and the next thing we want to do is, uh, I think we still need more bubbles. So let's go distribution. Let's go 25,000. Looking great to me, but it's looking pretty foamy, and we don't want foam everywhere. So what we're going to do is go to the shader here underneath the vertex map. Let's go shader, noise. And once we have a little bit of a noise here, let's drag the minimum value up. And you notice if you drag this all the way to 100, we're not going to have any. But if you dial it back a little bit, we're going to start to see some. I think there's one. You need a little bit more. So, so now we have streaks of the bubbles kind of forming in random locations, what is, which is what we want. Um, we can drag this back a little bit. And that's pretty good. Um, and we can do the same thing with this. And so now we have these random assortments of bubbles, but where we do have them, they're very high, highly concentrated, like this guy right here, which looks pretty amazing to me. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Um, and we are achieving everything that we said we would achieve so far, so we're looking really nice. Um, very nice. So we're good there. I think we have the liquid done. Next thing we need is the uh, whipped cream stuff here. So let's go to materials. Let's go specular material. Might be surprised and drag onto the whipped cream. Whipped cream, let's grab the node editor. And let's go over here. And uh, we're going to create a medium scattering with, you named it, RGB spectrum. Of course, this, uh, oops, I hate when that glitch happens. So you can drag this RGB spectrum up there with 100% white value as well as a float with a scattering value. And uh, let's take the transmission up to a hundred. And uh, I think this is where you wanna actually go to a universal. Take the, let's make this a universal material, take the metallic down to zero. But now we have some nice, um, so if we take this down to zero, we're back to where we were with this uh, subsurface scattering, but we can add a little bit of whiteness with the cream. Um, and that looks good. So we're getting this nice little creamy texture with a little bit of subsurface scattering. Um, the marshmallows, of course, that can just be a classic glossy material. Boom. With a little bit of roughness. And depending on if you want, add a little bit of texture. You can't really see these too well, so let's just take the roughness up a little bit. A little bit more. That should be good. Um, and we should be pretty much there. We just have to uh, texture this thing here. So I would probably just texture this another uh, glossy material and apply it to the base. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much here. Oh, of course, the cherry. Got to have that one pop of color there. Let's go objects. Let's go Ooh, uh, materials, my bad. And let's go to specular. Of course, for the cherry, because you want that nice little subsurface scattering there. Um, let's go node editor here. Within the node editor, let's go to medium scattering. Yet again, using this so much. And uh, we're going to go RGB spectrum. Boom, absorption. Let's go red. And float. And this is going to give us that nice glowy effect. Um, and take the absorption all the way up and we're going to want to take the uh, density I think oops no I guess we're going to want to take that up too but you're going to want to make the transition transmission a little bit uh, higher as well with a red I think and that's looking better so I think this should be this should be getting there so uh, we have this nice cherry on top, and uh, oh, can't forget about the stem. So let's go materials, object, uh, materials, octane diffuse. Let's uh, coat the stem a little bit with like a, just a classic dark kind of uh, brown. Just 
texture here. And remember, that doesn't have to be too crazy, but, you know, for the most part, I think we have it. We have this nice looking image. Now it just comes down to post-processing in a little bit. The only splash of color is kind of the liquid, which I think is cool. And uh, we can take this uh, Octane camera tag and go to post-processing, enable, and uh, take the bloom power up a little bit, just a little bit, and the glare power up a little bit, just with any kind of parts that need some glare. And notice we don't want this whole thing fogging up like we're in a dream state, so we have this new cutoff feature that can bring back the values we don't need to make blurry. So only like some necessary elements will be blurry um, now, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and this was pretty nice. What we can do, because we have all this highlight compression going on, um, we can drag the gamma down just a little bit and the, um, the exposure up just a little bit. As, much, as long as you're not getting too much of the, the uh, highlights blown out in here, I think we are. So what we can do is just bring that down just a little bit. Um, and we do want some of this, uh, we do want this coffee, or not coffee, we do want this hot cocoa to be showing its true colors. Um, so this looks good. This will give you a good base to be editing this in Photoshop or something like that. Um, and we do have some good detail here. And because we have two 2080 Ti's rocking right now, um, it is bumping them out pretty fast. So thanks for watching, guys. I think that is, for the most part, what we're looking for today. Um, of course, you can handle the saturation just a little bit maybe or desaturate it however you want. Um, some uh, some last-minute tweaks you wanted to do. And remember, the best part is, uh, because this is 100%, you know, for the most part, non-destructive, um, you can go all the way back to this liquid, take the spline, and uh, manipulate this stuff even further. And that's the really cool part, and everything will still be updated um, as you left it. So we just manipulated this whole splash, even though we've been texturing and working with it this whole time, um, including even just uh, adding more... Uh, what do you call it? You can add more <clears throat> splashes as you already did. So boom, click, click. So there's literally no end to this, uh, you know, this whole process. And I think that's the best part of this whole thing. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So my name is Patrick Foley. My Instagram is at Patrick underscore 4D. And uh, you guys should like and subscribe this video. Like and subscribe uh, NVIDIA. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time with the other videos. Appreciate it.